So once we've formed these long chains of nucleic acids, when we're talking about DNA, we're going to have two of these long strands that come together to form the DNA double helix. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about that helix structure. So we have these two strands of nucleic acids that are going to come together and they're going to be arranged so that they have their sugar and phosphate backbones along the outside with their nitrogenous bases pointing inward. And this forms a ladder sort of structure. So they have their nitrogenous bases pointing inward. So let's look on our diagram here. So here we have four nucleotides. So we have two chains of two nucleotides that have come together to form this ladder structure. So we said that on the outside, we're going to have our phosphate sugar backbone. So here you can see on this strand, a phosphate and a sugar and another phosphate and a sugar. So that's the backbone on one side. And on the other, again, we have our phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar. So that's the backbone. And then pointing inward, we have our nitrogenous bases here and here, and here and here. So these nitrogenous bases are pointing inward, and that's what forms sort of the rungs of this ladder structure. And those nitrogenous bases are forming hydrogen bonds between each other, and that's what holds these two strands together. And so if we look at the double helix structure over here on the left, you can see that we have those two strands and each one has this phosphate sugar backbone. So that's this part right here. So that's the phosphate sugar backbone of one strand and this is the phosphate sugar backbone of the other strand. And then pointing inward, we have the nitrogenous bases, which are forming the rungs of that ladder and they are um, hydrogen bonding with each other. So these two strands are going to come together in a very specific way. They are going to be complementary and anti-parallel. So those are two important terms. So let's talk about what that means. So complementary means that you will have specific bases that pair with each other. So A is always going to pair with T and C will always pair with G in DNA. Whereas in RNA, because they don't have the thymine, they have uracil instead, A is going to pair with U. Okay, so A always pairs with T or U, depending on if you're talking about DNA or RNA, whereas C always pairs with G. Okay, so if we look on our picture down here, you can see we have a thymine and an adenine. So right away, wait, right away we know we're looking at DNA here. And we have a guanine and a cytosine. And what you can see is that between A and T, we have two hydrogen bonds that have formed. Whereas between C and G, we have three hydrogen bonds. And that's really important. So here we're saying two hydrogen bonds form between A and T, as well as between A and U, and three hydrogen bonds between C and G. And the reason why this is important is because three hydrogen bonds are stronger than two. So if you have a double helix structure that is composed of mainly C's and G's, it's going to have a higher temperature that you need to reach in order to break those two strands apart because three hydrogen bonds between each is stronger than two. Whereas if you have a helix structure that is composed of mainly A's and T's, then that's going to break apart at a lower temperature. And that's going to be important when we talk about some um, laboratory techniques that are used to study nucleic acids, like PCR, for example. Okay, so in addition to being complementary, these strands are also anti-parallel. So what does that mean? So this means that one strand is going to be running from the five prime to the three prime end, whereas the other one that it's paired with is going to be running in the opposite direction. So again, on our diagram down here, remember we have our phosphate sugar backbone and each of those strands has a five prime end and a three prime end. So let's see if we can identify those on this diagram. So remember that the five prime end is going to have a free phosphate group. So here on this strand, we see a phosphate group right here. So we know that this is the five prime end. 
whereas the other end, you can see we have a free hydroxyl group. So we know that this is the three prime end. So you can see that this strand is going five prime to three prime. Whereas the one that it's paired to, because it's anti-parallel, is going to be going in the opposite direction. So you can see that the free phosphate group is down here at the other end. So this is our five prime end of this strand. And at the top over here, we have our free hydroxyl group. So this is the three prime end. Okay, so this one's going five prime to three prime in this direction. And this one's going five prime to three prime in this direction. So they're anti-parallel and complementary. And you can see that on our diagram at the left as well. So this strand you can see is five prime to three prime. And the strand that it is paired to is in the opposite direction, three prime to five prime. And each of those nitrogenous bases that form the rungs of that ladder are going to be base paired with each other in a complementary fashion. Another thing that you'll notice when you look at these base pairs is that you always have a purine paired to a pyrimidine. So if we look at the adenine and thymine right here, you can see that our thymine is the pyrimidine. Remember, bigger word, smaller molecule, it's just one ring. And the adenine here is our purine with that two ring structure. And the reason why this is important is because you end up with the same size of base pair. So if you were to pair together two purines, for example, which are both two ring structures, that would form a wider rung on that ladder compared to if you were to join together two pyrimidines, so two one ring structure. So having a purine and a pyrimidine pair gives the rungs of the ladder the same size all the way down that double helix. So for the MCAT, it's really important that you know which bases pair with each other, as well as how many hydrogen bonds form between each of those base pairs.